Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. It's gl we're glad to see all of you today on this uh, Fourth of July weekend. What a special time to be together and give God glory and thanks. We want to welcome any of you that are guests today and glad you're here. We want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy our worship time together. Our ushers are beginning to bring forward the attendance pads. We want to ask that you fill out the information there, pass them down the aisle, and then pass them back. And make sure you know everybody on your, on your row so that you can greet them by name in just a little while. While you're doing that, I want to call to your attention a couple of announcements. So some are in the bulletin. I want to remind you that tomorrow at uh, noon, we have our continued brown bag Bible study. You can bring a sandwich, and uh, we're going to sit around the table. Tomorrow, we begin a new study in the book of Romans, and I want to invite you to come and join us for that, and I think you'll find that to be a, a good uh, learning time uh, tomorrow at noon. Pastor Parish Committee, you all, the Staff Parish Committee, you all will meet uh, Tuesday at 530. Don't forget that important meeting as well. Also, I want to remind everyone that at noon on Wednesdays here back in the Rogers Chapel, we uh, celebrate Holy Communion. And I want to invite you to come and join us for that time. It's a very uh, informative, uh, uh, informal, I should say, uh, informative and intimate time as we gather for the Lord's Supper. And I want to invite everybody to join us. Notice in the bulletin also the announcement there about uh, dining for women and then the kids art camp is coming the end of this month. I want to encourage you to and, uh, get your kids signed up, Ch grandchildren, whoever you've got in your family, bring them. This will be an excellent time and we look forward to that. And then finally, as you can see, the Chautauqua series of 2014 is coming in August. And we're so excited when we're going to celebrate the 200th birthday of the Star Spangled Banner. I think you'll find it in a great uh, and exciting program, and we look forward to that, as, as always. Now, friends, let's stand and let's greet one another. You may be seated. Yeah. Aaliyah says it's time for church, so let's get started. It is good to be in the house of the Lord and rejoice and well be together. And uh, I, we're glad to have our brass with us today. You're in for a very special treat as always. And so now, friends, let's prepare our hearts to worship the Lord.
Thank you so much, choir, brass, uh, and Josh, yes, conductor today. Well, thank you, sir. Let's stand as we're able and join together for our call to worship that's found in our bulletins. We gather this morning appreciating our freedom to worship God. We draw near to the, to the God who rules over all nations. We seek to live in harmony and peace together with all peoples on the earth. May God continue to establish peace on earth and help us understand that it begins with our hearts. Come, let's worship the Lord. Let's sing together number 698, God of the Ages. Sing all the verses.
Be seated. We rejoice this day as we gather in this place to worship and to celebrate the freedom. None of us is here today out of fear, I don't think. Uh, I hope you're not afraid. Uh, we're not concerned that someone's going to oppress us for worshiping the Lord today, and we give thanks for that freedom and liberty that we so enjoy. We bring to our this place our concerns and needs, our celebrations, and so let's go to the Lord now in prayer. Wonderful and holy God, we thank you for gathering us here this day and for the blessing that you bestow upon our lives as we join with our sisters and brothers and experience the wonderful love of Christ. That unconditional love, O oh Lord, is powerful and we are humbled this day as we know that we're not a perfect people, Lord. We're broken sometimes by great sin. But you have promised that you would forgive us, have mercy on us, and for that, we are grateful. Today, as we gather, we pray, O oh Lord, for so many of the concerns that we have on our hearts. We think about family, friends, neighbors that are suffering. Some are sick, some are wounded, some are in the throes of disease. And we thank you, Lord, that you have promised us your healing power through the name of Jesus Christ. And so we offer now to lift these folks up in our, in our hearts and minds that your healing, your divine guidance on those who are talented and gifted in, the, in healing, that you might use each of us as avenues to proclaim this good news of love. Use us, O oh God. Make all these things take place so that we might be witnesses. We think about our grief, O oh Lord, and so many grieve today and we know that you are the comforter. You're the one, the only one, who can truly fill the void that's in our lives. And so overwhelm us, Lord, with that abundant love and your presence. We thank you, O oh God, for our church, for its leaders, and for all who participate. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunities that you give us to reach out beyond ourselves and to share in the ministry and mission of this church. It's, it ranges across the land and across the globe, and we give thanks for that. Lord, today is your day. We gather here in this place again to celebrate. We gather to remember. We gather, O oh God, to participate in this holy meal, and all of this is yours. It's not ours, Lord. And so, Lord, as we worship today, bless us in this hour. And may the goodness of your love guide us and direct us. As we now join our voices and we share together the prayer you taught your own disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand up once again as you are able. And let's sing number 696, America the Beautiful. Let's rise and sing.
remain standing for the reading of the gospel lesson today. It's found in the book of John, in the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. Hear these words of the Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. And when the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. And Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. And when the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn it knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. And then in John 6, verses 32 and following, it says, Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it was my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Say the word always. Always. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Be seated. My friends, Jesus once said that his teachings were like newly fermented wine, so new and effervescent that the good news couldn't be contained in the old wineskins of the old-time religion. You heard this story. John tells this story about the wedding in Cana. Most of you have been to a wedding, right? Everybody, pretty much everybody's been to a wedding. You know how it goes. Well, in Jesus' day, if you had come in that door back there, you would have found large earthenware jars containing water and they were used to clean up dusty roads getting there and you you would clean cleanse yourself before you came into the temple anyway at the wedding Jesus changed that water into wine and it was a signal it was a signal to all that it was indeed a new day a new spirit a new vision and I find it curious friends Whenever we share this story, how some people are amazed as they hear this, uh, discover this event in Jesus' life for the first time, they are, they, that he started his ministry doing something so, if you will, shocking, maybe frivolous, as turning water into wine. But you know, friends, the truth is, Jesus was intent on encouraging you and me to enjoy the celebrations of life. A lot of us have been enjoying the 4th of July weekend. Some of us have been up really late because our neighbors have been enjoying the 4th of July weekend. Anyway, but that's okay. Uh, (laughs) But anyway, Christ intended for us to understand that he wanted us to enjoy these celebrations of life and not take ourselves too seriously, but to capture the real life of his invitation to eat, drink, and be merry. Now, what are we saying here? You know, friends, here's the deal. I think Jesus is gathering up all of our sadness, all of our pain, all of the hurts that we have in our worlds today, and he puts it all in a brand new perspective for you and me. He throws a party. He invites the social lights, but he also invites us who are suffering, hurting, 
and are in pain. You go back to the prophet Joel. Back in chapter 2, verse 24 of the book of Joel, you'll find there where the prophet once said that he'd look forward to a day in Israel when, quote, that shall overflow with wine. When all of God's hungry ones will be filled with good things. What's happening here in this story in the gospel that I'm telling you about today, Jesus is announcing, hey guys, the day is here. Finally, it's here. If you've ever had a day in your life, you know, where you hoped for hope, where you maybe feared your fears. Have you ever had a day when you wondered, could this day get any worse? Ever had one of those days? Sure you have. You're nodding your heads. Any day when you thought your soul, you heard your soul go, boy, I wish I had the Lord today, you know? Well, Jesus gives us an invitation to his feast of life with these words. He says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. You see, my friends, those words are a gracious invitation to you and to me. To you and to me. It's an invitation, and it puts our daily eating and our daily drinking in a proper perspective. I mean, no longer do we need to kind of shove it in, you know, when we're eating, like there's no tomorrow. My mother was always saying, Philip, slow down. No longer do we need to drink ourselves into dizzying stupors because we want to hide the pain and run away from our fears. Friends, the good news is that, huh, the good, the good news, the greatest news that I or anyone could share with you today is this. Are you ready? You, you are loved. Stay with me here. You are loved. Our God has come to us. Friends, our God prepares for us a table. And this is not Phil's table, friends. This is not David's table. It's not Roy's table. This is not anybody's table. It's not even First United Methodist Church's table. This is the Lord's table. It's God's table for you and for me. And when we came in that door, God met us and said, Hey, don't sit back there. Come on up here to the front. That's what the invitation is all about that God gives to us. You see... Christ drank the vinegar, and that's the best word I can think of. How many of you like to drink vinegar? No hands. Okay. Well, Christ drank it for us, thank goodness. The vinegar of, a human, of human cruelty, and he drank it down to the very last drop. He thirsted, he hungered, he tasted the bitterness of, it all, of all that you and I experience in our lives every single day. And in so doing, what this became was a sign a sign of God for you and me and for the world. And in so doing, he showed us a sign, a manifestation of his glory. Now, some people will tell you, oh, the glory of the Lord, it's out there. I mean, I see it on Facebook. People put pictures, you know, the sunsets and some say, look how good God is. Well, I'm going to tell you, that's not right. The goodness of God is right here. Everybody do that. Everybody, everybody do this. What are, what are you pointing at? Your heart. That's right. That's where the goodness of the Lord is, friends. It's in you. Every day, every minute, with every breath you breathe and every step you take, every beat of your heart. Now here in that wedding, that the story that I told you about, that reading of the gospel, amidst our daily cares, cares about what to eat and what to drink and how to control our drinking and what we're going to do about our weight and how other people are looking at us. Friends, right in the middle of all of that stands God in the flesh. Friends, to eat and drink in the name and in the presence of Jesus is to eat with life, to share life, to participate in the joy and the festivity which was meant to be at the heart of all that we do. And so very simply, friends, the invitation today is, is, is simple. After we get a glimpse of the glory of the Lord, whether it be at that wedding in Cana or maybe in the upper room or maybe on the Emmaus Road or, or where it is, the question is how can we eat or drink anything in the very same humdrum manner that we usually do? Since we are invited to the Lord's table to eat, to eat it ought to illuminate all of our meals. I don't know any other way to explain that except to say, it's like this morning when you ate breakfast. 
I bet some of you got up and you had your coffee and your eyes were barely open. Maybe you ate something. I had a boiled egg. Mm. You know? Some of you ate soggy cornflakes. A lot of you probably had a Pop-Tart. <laughs> but my friends, they can't be ordinary stuff anymore. What we're talking about here is how God turns that into a banquet, a feast for you and me. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a snack, midday snack or a, a sandwich eaten out in the hayfield somewhere. It doesn't matter if it's a dinner around your table with your family this evening. My friends, it should be, it can be, and it should be all done for the glory of God. Why? Because what we're doing is re-responding. Re That's the word. We're responding to God's glory that is revealed through our eating and drinking and realizing our joy and thanks. My family, I pray today that as we gather around this table and we celebrate this holy meal and all the meals that we'll receive from this point on, lunch, what are you going to do for lunch today? Will you celebrate it? I hope you will. I hope that just as the people in John's gospel talked, we will too. How did they say it? Lord, give us this bread always. That's right, always. Always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, I invite you to join me for the Apostles' Creed. Today it's found on page 7 of your hymnal. And I want you to turn to that because it's a little bit different than our normal Apostles' Creed. And let's stand together as we share in this affirmation of our faith. Will you join me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen Amen My brothers and sisters Christ invites to his table all who love him and earnestly seek to repent of their sin Therefore, let's turn to page 8 and join together as we confess our sin before God and one another. Page 8. Will you join me with your voices? Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we've not loved our neighbors, and we've not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. My friends, offer a sign of peace and reconciliation to your neighbor.
You may be seated. Friends, our ushers are preparing to come forward now, so let's prepare ourselves as we share our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God. Thank you, holy God, for the blessings that you pour upon our lives. Thank you for this opportunity to share our gifts and tithes. We pray that we're generous as you have been generous to us. Use these gifts now for the glory of your kingdom and the work of the church. In Christ we pray. Amen.
seated. I'm going to ask uh, David and Meredith Goins and my wife Barbara to come and join me as we prepare for communion. And I invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 9 for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release of the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, you, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by his baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. And he gave thanks to you and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant that's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim now the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. gather around this table today our faith teaches us that Christ died for all there are no exceptions so if you're a guest with us today you're invited to gather at this table 
I'll ask our choir to come first, and then the ushers will give you guidance. But let us celebrate and remember what Christ has done for us. Choir? Mm -hmm.
Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you for this day and for the opportunity to receive this meal. Let it transform our lives. Let us be changed as we prepare to go from this place. Let us never see our food and drink in the same manner. Thank you, Lord, for your love through Christ. And it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. David, uh, we're doing 593. We're going to do all verses. That, that's okay. We're going to do the first and last verse of 593. Okay? So let's stand and let's sing. Loving and holy God, as we go from this place, may the power of your grace and mercy be on us. Make us bold in our faith, and may your peace, peace that passes all understanding, abide with us now and forever. Amen. God bless you.